You hit submit, and five minutes later, your resume gets rejected. But why? I've reviewed tens of thousands of resumes and I've hired over 10,000 people. And I'm gonna show you how the ATS really works with a demo of what hiring managers see in the ATS's resume scanning software. That way you can stop making the mistakes that get you immediately rejected. An applicant tracking system or an ATS is basically a digital filing cabinet where companies store and organize resumes and applications. It's not some scary robot that auto rejects you. I'll be back. It's just software that helps recruiters manage hundreds if not thousands of applications. Now I'm gonna show you exactly what I see when I'm looking at candidates for Teal. You're finally gonna get to see what an ATS looks like. This is the behind the scenes look that most people don't see. So here's the ATS I use when I'm hiring for Teal. For privacy, I've gone ahead and blurred out all the candidates' names. So when you apply for a job, your resume gets uploaded here. What you're seeing is my application review and I've got 155 applicants. My job as the hiring manager now is to go through these as quickly as I can. But what you're seeing is just core data. There's no fancy AI, there's nothing going on that would be auto-selecting the candidate. I'll usually go ahead and sort the submissions by ascending, so I make sure to review all the people that applied first. That's just the way I do it. All recruiters might do it differently. From there, I'll I'll jump right into looking at candidates. So I open one up and what you can see is that the information is being pulled directly from the application. So the application goes a long way. There's the person's name, their email, their LinkedIn URL, and then these questions. Those really matter, they come right in. So what I'll do is I'll see the application. I can usually go straight to their questions. And then what I'll do is I'll look at how they answered the questions. Very quickly, I can see this person didn't put a lot of effort into answering the questions. For me, that's gonna immediately put the person pretty low on my list, but I'll still look at their resume. And so here I can see their resume. Again, I've blurred it out for privacy, but I will read through their resume. And what you're noticing is all the colors and all the formatting is coming right through. And then there's no magical AI or anything that's grading it. I'll just come in here and click archive. And then I have to give my reason which I will say you know, not qualified, lacks skills or qualifications. I can now email the candidate. In this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and archive it. And that's it, that's as simple as the flow. Now what I can do is very quickly go to the next candidate and I can see their resumes. And I'm not gonna go through each of these for you to see, but I can add notes, I can add feedback, I can immediately send them emails, and even other people at my company can go ahead and apply feedback as well. If I wanted to now filter down the candidates because it is reading the contents of their resumes, I can come over here and I can do a filter. And I can filter by a lot of different things. I can filter by the contents, by stage, but this is where AI can come in handy. I can say, use my AI filter assistant, and here it's gonna give me an AI. I'll go ahead and just use the one that it's got because some of these candidates do have that ability. And now you can see that it filtered it down. I might look for a particular keyword or a skill that really matters to me for this job, but that's about it. It's not really doing any kind of synonyms or fancy AI detection. Now, that's not to say that AI isn't gonna make its way into some of the new cutting edge ATSs or even some of the past products, but today it's a really simple filtering process. And that's it, it's as simple as that. Then once I have candidates that are active, they go into the pipeline. These are the people that we're interviewing. I manage the interviews, I send the calendar links, I do the scheduling. Other people can then give their feedback on the interviews. We have a rubric and scoring, but it's all people giving their advice and feedback. There's no AI or automation in this process. And we work our way through, drag them through the process, and I make sure that I can manage all my emails and my notifications and let people know if they're moving forward or not. And that's really what the ATS is. The ATS is just helping me stay organized so I don't lose your application in a pile of 500 other resumes. It's showing me your information in a clean, simple format, and that's it. So when you hear people talking about beating the ATS, what they really mean is making it easy for a human like me to see that you're really qualified. And that starts with understanding what's actually happening on the other side of your application. Okay, so now that you've seen what's actually happening behind the scenes, let's bust some of the biggest myths about the ATS. Is it true that the ATS rejects a resume before a human ever sees it? No, this is the biggest lie on the internet right now. The ATS does not auto reject your resume. It's not some robot gatekeeper scanning for keywords and tossing you in the trash. That's just not how it works. What actually happens is your resumes get stored in the system, just like I showed you before. And then a human being, a recruiter, or a hiring manager like me, opens it up and reviews it. If you don't hear back, it's because a person decided you weren't a right fit for that specific role. Not a robot, it was me. The ATS is just organizing your application so that I can find it. It's helping me 
not hurting you. In the end, there's a lot you can do on your resume to beat the ATS, and I cover exactly how to write an ATS-friendly resume in this video. Now, I do want to talk about knockout questions. On the application, if you answer something that is a no-go for the company, they may have rules in their ATS that will automatically take you out of the process. That's not some sort of smart AI detecting, it's based on something you answered. As an example, if it asks, are you authorized to work in the US? If you say no, and that's a requirement, and it was on the JD, you will be automatically rejected, but it wasn't some kind of intelligence system picking, it's based on the information that you put in the application. And those are called knockout questions. Is the ATS the main reason people don't hear back from applications? The real reason you're not hearing back has nothing to do with the ATS. You're not hearing back because you're not qualified for the role, or your resume and application doesn't clearly show how you meet the job requirements. Or it could be something simple like you're in the wrong location. Or there are a bunch of other applicants that are just a better fit. Those are the real reasons. It's not AI deciding. Blaming the ATS is just an easy excuse that keeps you from fixing the actual problems in your resume and application materials. Are ATSs only used by big corporations? Definitely not. Small companies use them too. Teal's currently eight people and we pay for an ATS. Companies of all shapes and sizes will use an ATS. Even startups use them. Any company that gets more than a handful of applications probably has some kind of system to organize them. It might be a fancy, complicated enterprise ATS, or it might be a simple tool like Greenhouse, Lever, or Ashby. Those are equally as robust, but they're more modern platforms that some of the big enterprises don't use. But it also might be like a spreadsheet or just a basic Google form. But the point is they're using something to stay organized. So if you think you can avoid an ATS by only applying to small companies, think again. They're really everywhere. If I submit my resume once to a company's ATS, is it in the system forever for future jobs? The answer is maybe. It depends on the company and their system settings. Some companies keep resumes in their database for months or even years. Some may have a digital deleting policy where they get rid of them sooner. So the truth is, if you apply for one role and don't get it, a recruiter might find your resume later when they're hiring for another position. But here's the thing, a lot of companies don't actively search their old applicant pool. They're focused on the people applying to the current job posting. So don't assume that just because you applied once, they're going to remember you or pull your resume for future roles. If you wanna be considered for a new position, I'd apply for it. Don't sit around hoping they'll find you in their system. It is really worth your while to apply again. Now let's get into the straight up lies you've been told about the ATS. These are the myths that keep people from getting hired. Will fancy formatting graphics or tables on my resume get me filtered out of the ATS? Not exactly. But here's what can happen, especially if you upload a Word doc instead of a PDF. The ATS might struggle to read the fancy design, so when I open up your resume in the system, it could look like a jumbled mess. Or key information might be missing because the ATS couldn't parse it correctly. So that's gonna lead to me not seeing your experience laid out clearly. I'm seeing a bit of a formatting disaster, and then guess what? I'm gonna move on to the next candidate. The ATS didn't reject you, I did, because your resume was too hard to read. Highly designed resumes like Canva resumes can actually be bad for applying to jobs. You can watch more about it in this video. If my resume is two pages or more, will an ATS auto reject it? No, this is complete nonsense. The ATS doesn't care how long your resume is. It's not sitting there counting pages and tossing out resumes that are too long. That's just not how it works. Now, will a recruiter get annoyed if your resume is four pages full of irrelevant information? Yeah, probably. But that has nothing to do with the ATS. If you need two pages to clearly show why you're qualified for the job, then use two pages. The ATS will handle it totally fine. Is keyword stuffing the way to beat the ATS? No, and I can spot keyword stuffing from a mile away. If your resume is just a list of buzzwords with no context, I know exactly what you're doing. You're trying to game the system and it makes you look desperate and dishonest. The ATS isn't scanning for keywords and auto-ranking you. I'm reading your resume, and I need to see how you actually used those skills, not just that you listed them. So instead of stuffing keywords, use the job description as a guide. Naturally incorporate the relevant skills and experience that align with the role. Show me the results you achieved, the impact you had. That's what's gonna get you hired. Does the ATS understand synonyms and related skills or only exact keywords? Most ATS systems don't understand synonyms the way a human would. Actually, hopefully when more AI makes its way into the process, it might, but today, 
They're pretty simple systems. They're looking for exact matches or very close variations. So if the job description says project management and you only put project coordination, the system might not make that connection. And more importantly, I might not make that connection when I'm skimming your resume. This is why it's so important to mirror the language in the job description. If they say Python, don't say programming. If they say customer success, don't say client relations. Use their exact words. If this is something you wanna focus on, I highly recommend using Teal's Resume Builder with the matching mode. It will detect the keywords in the job description and then highlight the ones in your resume that match and give you AI to help you write bullets that are in line with the job description's language. Is the ATS totally unbiased and fair or does it create hidden barriers? Here's the truth. The ATS itself is just software. It doesn't have a bias, but people using it, they might. We absolutely have biases. I have biases. Every recruiter has a bias. We're human. We have things that we look for and things that we're comfortable with. So that means we make judgments based on your name, your school, your previous companies, gaps in your employment, things that have nothing to do with whether you can do the job. The ATS doesn't create those barriers, people do. And that's something you need to be aware of when you're applying. You can watch this video to learn all the things hiring managers are judging you on, including their biases and everything they won't admit. If I tailor my resume perfectly to the job description, will I definitely get through the ATS? Unfortunately, no. There are no guarantees in the hiring process. Even if you tailor your resume perfectly, you still might not get the job. Maybe there's an internal candidate. Maybe someone else has a more relevant experience. Maybe the hiring manager already has someone in mind. Maybe they got 500 applications and they can only interview 10 people. Tailoring your resume gives you a better shot, but it doesn't guarantee anything. The job search is competitive, and sometimes you do everything right and still don't get chosen. That's just the reality. But giving up because you think the ATS is blocking you, that's the real mistake. Focus on what you can control. Make your resume clear, relevant, and easy to read and keep applying. Momentum, cadence, and pace are everything. A tailored resume can make the difference between getting noticed and being totally ignored. But I get it, it can be difficult to tailor it for each application and not miss anything. Look, that's why I built Teal, a single place to ensure your resume is perfectly tailored for each application, your applications are tracked, and your follow-ups are flawless. You can get started for free with the link in the description below. All right, I hope that was helpful, and thanks for watching.